you are probably playing Hope Summers incorrectly. I brought on number one ranked player, Big Baby, to talk about what he used to hit rank one and what decks he modified it from. And a lot of the conversation revolved around how so many people are playing Hope Summers so hopelessly wrong. So let's jump into the convo with Big Baby. I'm joined by Big Baby for the, the record third time on this channel. This is actually the most any guest has appeared on this channel. Congratulations on that record. Every other guest that has appeared on this channel more than three times is named uh, Lambie Series. So hmm. that's it. That's it's just you now as, as an actual guest who has appeared uh, three times on this channel. And of course, we're bringing you in because you hit rank one with the Hope mid-range style deck, but your mid-range deck with Hope looks a lot different than everything everyone else is playing with Hope. So we're going to start with the deck you used to hit rank one, the deck you've been holding rank one with, and then talk about how it evolved into the form you see it in today. So let's yeah. start with this deck. Talk me through the basic thought process, what each of these cards are doing, anything you want to point out specifically before we go into the sort of evolution of the archetype. Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing to start is I think I was tied with at least Yo Woody for features on this channel. So I just want right. to say, suck it, suck it, Woody. I surpassed you. So then is that the really hope... the phrase you want to use that you want to say suck it woody you want to that's that's how you want okay all right continue <laughs> um there's i wanted to play good cards with hope right like that was like let's play good cards because we're, we'll get into it but in seeing kind of like the theory crafting for hope it's like it's one thing to have more energy it's another thing to build a deck that leverages that energy to do something powerful Right. Like we see that with Thanos, where it's just like snowballing stones into like big dude, big dude, big dude, big dude, or like Professor X Scamalane. So it's, it, I wanted to do things that were reasonably powerful and or more than reasonably powerful. And the best mid range card by far is Miss Marvel. So she's like the linchpin of this deck. And I would say any, any mid range deck, with the exception of Disc. Uh, discard just because that's a mid-range combo it's really a yeah. combo deck that fulfills a mid-range uh right. slot yeah so i mean so miss marvel is just like absolutely foundational so then once you start saying okay i'm gonna ramp i'm gonna play miss marvel what cards go with that obviously jeff goes with hope even in the bad ones kitty's not a particularly good card but she does, she's the engine that lets you just start procking hope over and over and just accumulating stupid amounts of energy while also not filling that location, um, which is obviously very useful. And then Gladiator is just a 3-8 who is great. Like, you know, he can almost, he can't solo lane with Miss Marvel, but Gladiator and even a rock plus Miss Marvel is 13 power. It's just a ton of power to contend with. And then beyond that, I mean, Doom and Magneto are two of the best five drops in the game. Shadow King is actually a fairly impressive tech card for reasons you started to talk about. Um, people are playing Move, which I feel bad trying to crap on, but, you know, it's, you it's hard out you there. Got to do what you got to do. There's Phoenix Force. Um, some people still play Surfer. Um, it's kind of insult to injury versus the like Angela move decks. Yeah. Um, because you don't really need Shadow King to beat them, but it's funny. Um there's just random stuff that Shadow King is useful for. And then before we get to like the spice of Black Bolt stature, um Mobius, who's like really impressed me. I've never really liked Mobius in part because he's just a boring card to play. Like he doesn't even have a, a visual or any effects. You just play him. Like it's not like they even added the Owen Wilson like wow. It's just he doesn't do anything. He's a th and but like he's been so good. Um, he's good into Zabu, obviously. He's good into Tribunal. He's good into Wave because I mean you're seeing a little bit less from Thanos, but like Thanos waves on three, you Mobius on three, you snap, you play Doctor Doom. You're so far ahead. The game is like you know they can still win because it's Thanos, but like you're you're far ahead. Yes. Um, people are playing Spider Ham. You take out Mobius, sometimes you get a 0-12 Magneto or any other card. 
um, locations. Like, I never really like playing Mobius, but now I'm just like, he is so good. And he kind of fulfills the same role that, or the way I think of it, which was when in the Leech Darkhawk deck, which was a tempo loss that is compensated for by Miss Marvel and other things that like, okay, yeah, I'm kind of taking on the chin tempo wise by playing this, you know, three, three, but I can't, I get to accelerate later. So that's like the main core of the deck. And then Black Bolt and Stature. I know I said like, we're trying to play good cards in this deck and people might be like, Black Bolt and Stature. But the, the, what, what I did was I started thinking about um, kind of like the old mid-range decks with Black Bolt and Stature and Dark Hawk. And then I was like thinking, and I was also thinking about why certain mid-range cards just aren't good. Like, and the card I thought about was Rescue. Now, Rescue is a 4-9. A 4-9 is good. But the problem with Rescue and a lot of other mid-range decks is that they just don't do enough against the meta. So I was thinking about that, and then I went, wait, you know what would be really cool? If you played Rescue into Black Bolt. So, <laughs> then I, so I did it as a meme, and then I started making this deck with Rescue in place of Gladiator, and then it actually was doing so well that I was like, all right, let's get rid of Rescue. Let's get serious and just put Gladiator in the deck. Right. Um, so that's basic. But then, so what does Black Bolt and Stature do in this deck is it actually can be really strong which is on five, you can play Black Bolt and Kitty on top of Hope. And then on turn six, you have eight energy. Right. A Kitty Pride, a, Kitty Pride, a Stature, and then six energy, which you which can be Doom. It can be Magneto. It can be Shang-Chi and Shadow King. It can be Miss Marvel. And, it can be, like, it's just, it's actually really strong. And because you're a Miss Marvel deck, there's value in getting a one-six Stature to help you put in the lane because sometimes like you know you're just like you don't have enough to you know you have a three drop is this sometimes you it just it just helps you proc miss marvel in multiple lanes so like yeah black bull's not the best card but in this package i actually just really liked it because black bull kitty and then eight energy stature kitty things like it gives you so many options so much power and it's also a good amount of power so i'm not going to say that like Black Bolt Stature is, like, the best thing to be doing in this shell for, you know, as compared to, like, Vision, because Vision's just, like, a great card, period. Yeah. Um, but just the way it interacts with Hope and the eight, like, getting to that eight energy mark and then having two one-drops to play, it just feels really clean when you get there. I um, will say the part of Black Bolt Stature that I think I like is the Stature part, right? Like, you yeah. want to have that, like, I want to play a 1-6 alongside a 6-drop, right? There's mm -hmm. often, like, one energy floating a lot of the time in a deck like this. And yeah. Stature being able to fill that with just as much power as possible. Yes. Just mashing it into that. One of the other yes. things that really struck me when I saw this deck is Black Bolt Stature originally sort of took off as a replacement for, like, two cards, right? First, it was a replacement for Devil Dinosaur that couldn't get Shang-Chi'd. And then later mm -hmm. on, it was a replacement for Sarah that was just dis doing the discount thing a little bit better, right? So, like, you yeah. had Zabu in your Black Bolt Stature deck. You were cheating about as much as the Sarah players were, but you had better stats as the baseline because Black Bolt was a 5-8, Stature was a 5-7. And so you just got this stuff for free. And what I'm struck by looking at this deck is it's gone from, in your hands, it's gone from this, you know, move, synergy, Craven, Silk, move stuff, Spider-Man, right, to it's constructed like a Sarah deck, right? This is a Shadow King, Jeff, Mobius, Gladiator, Shang-Chi, Miss Marvel. That's a Sarah deck. That is the backbone of a Sarah deck, right? And, and what you've done instead is Hope Summers is your Sarah, and that comes with different, you know, requirements for what you're allowed to play, right? You become a Kitty deck. You become a Doctor Doom Magneto deck. That's the yeah. Hope Summers package instead of the stuff that Sarah is doing, right? And that's the adaptation that I think really matters here because most people are leaning so far into the hope thing they end up playing bad cards and you're just like what if instead of playing bad cards we played all bangers all the time yeah exactly with the caveat that black bull stature may not be bangers, right but like it's it's worked and the theory behind it is not like let's just play black bull because he's a i have a cool variant right. um and like jeff hoogland made the observation that hope has not sir but like 
gives you an alternative to Zabu. Correct. And it's really true. Yep. And like, like you can't tech extra energy does not get stopped by Mobius. It's just extra energy. So when you're just throttling extra energy in there, you just have it. Whereas Zabu just gets shut down by Mobius. Sarah gets shut down by Mobius. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say which one is different, which one is better. Like, what would you rather have the, the, but I mean, there's a lot less Zabu and hope is really strong. So yeah, that's exactly right. It's just kind of, yeah, that's exactly it. It's, Effectively, it's a, she lets you cut the weakest part of the Sarah deck and you get to add in Dr. Doom Magneto, right? Like that's, exactly. that's effectively what's happening here. It's like you get, you, instead of playing this like terrible five, four, you don't have to yeah. do that. You also get to play Dr. Doom Magneto, which Sarah typically doesn't have access to. You just get to yeah. do everything, a mid range deck, whatever you want. Yes, basically. Um, you don't fit in as many tech cards, but that's life. Um, you get well, yeah. you are the only deck in the game, I think, right now that can reasonably support Shadow King and Shang Chi. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's you and like bounce. Like it's like it's hard yeah. to support both of those in the same deck right now. They're like yeah. discard sure can't do that. Discard can't play a tech card at all. Yeah. I mean no, I mean that and that's you know, that's that's something that I found um Shadow King is just still good at I think recently he had been kind of like at a, a down point, mm -hmm. but he's been pretty good lately. Um, sometimes you just like tempo him so you can knock Miss Marvel later. Okay, obviously playing a 2 2 tempo is like not very good, but when he's good, he's great. Like when he's good, he turns a max up you can't win into, oh, I can win this. Nimrod. Um, you mean Nimrod. Nimrod. You mean Shuri Nimrod. Well, like... that's, a, that's, a, that's a big one, but like even discard, like because, um, you know, Collector can be, right. Collector Dakin, it's like it helps there. And that's a good deck, and I don't know if this has the better of discard, um, but it helps. It like it definitely helps. It definitely shaves down some of their points. Um, and but definitely, definitely Shuri Nimrod, definitely Phoenix Force, but um, you know, generally can be pretty useful. You don't have to. Also, it doesn't have to be like delete a blob to get value. Right. If you take away if you take away three points of power, it's a two five. Okay, that's a two five. Um, so yeah, so the idea for this deck is try to have as much game into the meta, which is still, Thanos is like the shadow looming over everything. There's still a lot of people playing a bunch of stuff out there. Um, so you have Mobius, which, is, which has been really good. Um, and Mobius versus Magneto really helps versus Tribunal. Like that's your Tribunal plan. Um, other mid-range piles just going to outpoint them with Miss Marvel and Gladiator and Doom and whatever else you can do. Um, Thanos, it's a tough matchup. Um, it's kind of, I've been thinking, like, it's ideally this type of mid-range deck with reactive tech cards would be kind of like the, the counterbalance to Thanos, to the yeah. dominant deck. And it's still, and I think it's just because Thanos is overtuned. So it's hard to say that, like, this is not occupying the same kind of spot where, like, old Darkhawk was, where, like, yeah. you know, Darkhawk will farm you. This is not going to farm Thanos. But it is something where if you're kind of bored of Thanos and you want to play something fun with a new card that's not Thanos, this is fully competitive. And, like, yes. Miss Marvel Doom is very good in the Thanos because, you know, you're contesting multiple lanes with 10-plus power, which is more than just a lot of mid-range decks that are just like Shang-Chi and a prayer. Um, Especially as Thanos becomes more of a Professor X deck. Like yes. Miss Marvel is just like the single best card that so you can play before, that they can't. At the height of the Professor X Thanos meta when everyone was crying, mm -hmm. I was just beating the crap out of them by playing the card Miss Marvel, which is very, very just destroys good. which just destroys lockdown Thanos instant instantaneously. Um, this was before she got nerfed, but it's like, oh, you Professor X me there. I play Jeff. I play Miss Marvel. I win. Um, it's one of the and... things that people talk about Thanos like it can do everything, and it can do a lot of things, but specifically yeah. the card Miss Marvel, it can never play. And no, that play. has always been a relative weakness, right? Like if you're yeah. looking to target Thanos, a competitive advantage to be gained is Miss Marvel. Mm -hmm. She's just a ton of stats, and Thanos. 
you know, if if they're doing the thing where they're just trying, like, I won the Professor X lane, and you you just need points and like non interactive points, and she's the premier. I mean, you can interact with her in Rogue or Enchantress, but there's not a lot of them. She's just a lot of points, like just mm. straight up, just a ton of points. Um, makes it a lot harder to ally with you because, like, yeah, I'm up in this lane, but if they play a Doom over there where I'm not going to ally with, okay, I'm not, I can't ally with that. <laughs> yeah, you just die. Um, yes. So she, so the the point, the, what I'm trying to do with this deck is maximize his power output. Miss Marvel, Magneto, Doom, Gladiator, reactive tech cards. Take advantage of the extra energy and try to have as much game into as much of the meta as I could. Here's where things get a little bit weird. I was originally not going to put this video out because we recorded it on the Monday before Elsa got changed, like the day before. And I was thinking, you know, okay, you know, Elsa got changed. Maybe people still aren't playing these like terrible versions of Hope Summer's Elsa Craven decks. Maybe that's not a real thing. Maybe I'm I'm tilting at windmills. I'm grasping at straws. And then I got like four messages from Big Baby that were just like, you have to put this video out. People are still playing this crap. So keep in mind, we recorded this just before Elsa was uh, changed to be a three cost card. That said, basically everything we talk about is still true. This is what I think most people think of when they think of Hope Midrange. And I really, part of why I wanted to get you on here was so I could just sort of wind you up and get you going about why this stuff sucks so much and why it is such a bad idea to lean this far into like synergies. I, I almost would describe this deck as getting lost in the sauce because you start at like a basically correct place, which is I want to play Hope Summers and then move stuff out, right? I'd like to play Hope Summers and move stuff out. I play Hope Summers, I move stuff out. And that is, you know, fine, but you end up playing like an excessive amount of cards to support that strategy that end up being weaker than just running normally good cards. Yeah, I mean, the problem with this deck is half the cards are bad. Yeah. Like just straight up bad cards. Name names. Um, Angela, terrible. Craven in a move shell where he's like getting a big boy, sure. Uh, a two six is not really doing it anymore. Elsa, bad. Silks, whatever. Um, this one doesn't have Miles. I kind of like Miles. Spider Man's fine. Nightcrawler, why? And it doesn't have Miss Marvel. So it's like, it one it violates the number one rule of mid range decks, which is play card Miss Marvel, best mid range card. Um, so it just doesn't have the best mid range card for no reason. Two, it has a lot of extra energy. But it doesn't do anything with it. Like, what do you do with this deck? Like, your maximum power potential in this deck is essentially eclipsed by someone playing Miss Marvel and Doom. That puts out more points than this deck can put out. So, like, this deck isn't doing anything. That and, and then you look at the meta. How does this deck beat Living Tribunal? It doesn't. How does it beat Phoenix Force? It doesn't. How does it beat Hela? It doesn't. How does it beat Thanos? Shang-Chi in a prayer. Um, basically, like, I will win one lane, I'll figure that out, and then I'm going to Shang-Chi you in another lane, and then I'm going to win. It's, it has no plan for Shang-Chi. Um, I don't see how it beats Sheenot. I don't see how it beats Discard. I just don't see anything in the meta that this deck could reasonably be. With You know, obviously you can win, you have a good, whatever, you can win, and you can play this deck, but it is not good. Period. Yeah, and full it's, sentence. And it's, <laughs> and, it's, and it's bad into all the decks that you see on ladder. It, it does not have a way to win almost any, versus any other deck. I find you this get... deck absolutely fascinating. Like, I think that, like, decks like this are so fascinating because I remember when I was bad at card games, as hard as that may be to believe, I was terrible at card games, and a lot of why I was bad was I would get so caught up in theory crafting and so... Uh, away from the actual playing of the game, right? And this deck right here, it like to whoever's playing this stills credit. Like I just pulled it off of Untap. It's like the most played Elsa Bloodstone deck, right? I went and looked for that. I was just like, all right, we're just gonna pick like a, an Untap deck. People are playing. This is the most played Elsa Bloodstone deck in the top fifty percent of internet. So there you go. And this is the kind of deck where it's just like this is a theory craft deck that has not processed that it has run into reality. Yeah, This is a deck that is built around a theory. Oh, I want to play move cards with Elsa Bloodstone and Hope Summers. That's how I'm going to build this deck. It's a theory-crafted deck, and it is currently in the process of running smack dab into 
a wall of Phoenix Force and God knows what else, yeah. where it's just like, I it's, have no answer for any of it. That's like a lot of the problem with a lot of mid-range decks that are like, it's not that your idea for the deck is bad. Right. It's that you're starting with what would be a cool deck, when unfortunately the answer is, these are the decks I'm going to play. How do I make a deck that can beat these? And a deck like this is like, yeah, I understand what it's doing. You proc Angela, you proc Craven, you put up some points, you play Dr. Doom. It's totally sensible. The problem is it's just, it's bad against the meta because it can't beat any of the decks that you're going to play. Um, you don't go it's kind of like, enough. You don't have enough power. You don't right. have enough answers. You're too right. invested it's, in the synergy. It's kind of like this, like people playing Silver Surfer, which I think is better than this deck, and I don't think Silver Surfer is very good. Um, it's, it's like you don't really have a. It's a deck. Like everyone understands the deck. It's theory crafted. I'm playing threes. I'm going to Silver Surfer and maybe Abs Man, and yes, and you can win games. But how do you beat the decks you're going to see? And now Silver Surfer also has like Zabu, so they can Shang you again. That's a Silver Sur That's a Shang Chi in a prayer. I'm going to win a lane. I'll figure that out. And then I'm going to win another lane. I'm going to win another lane with Shang-Chi. Yeah. And that's, that's it. Um, and you have to, unfortunately, like, you know, if we were all just playing decks that were fun, that would be one thing. But the problem is we know what you're, we, we can go on the internet. We can, we know what we're seeing. Untap, whatever. I'm going to see probably 20%, 15% combo decks, you know, 69% Thanos. Not nice. Um, Loki, nice. blah, blah, blah. Right. And you, so you're just going to get crapped on if you're just bringing a deck that isn't built to beat the things you're going to say, you're going to, you're going to see. And there's nothing wrong with playing a deck that's fun, but like, it's also not fun getting your ass kicked constantly. And a deck like this just doesn't have points. It just, yeah. it's a points deck that does not put a point. It, it was from an era before Miss Marvel, before Call Obsidian, before Scar, before Miss before Gladiator, before Blob, before a million other cards that have completely outclassed this. And it's not because this thing doesn't have Magneto, you know, so you can go Doom into Magneto. Like, even if it had Magneto in place of, you know, whatever card here is worse, it's just not good. It just doesn't do anything. It's just, it's just like a limp noodle. So what about if you were slightly less of a limp noodle, right? This is pretty much the list that was on my last tier list that I actually got from you, right? Like this yeah. is, it's still running a bit of the move synergy, if only because it can be useful to get those extra procs off of hope. It's not running the Black Bolt stature. It's got, you know, a vision, a Spider-Man in there instead. That's where the points are coming from. But we've cut out all of the like, total ass cards right there's yeah. no angela there's no elsa there's no craven We're running good cards instead we end up at something that looks like this what does that strike you as is this is this like if you wanted to play like you know call this hope move and you know pretend it's still a move deck could you do that yeah yeah I, I, that's the this is the best i think you can do maybe adding in my i mean it might be a meta call with miles because one thing i would say is if professor x thanos like really comes back Mm -hmm. there's value in just going like Jeff into Spider-Man, into Gladiator, into Miles, like Matt, Gladiator, Miles on turn four, because they really cannot Professor X you if you, if you get to the board like that. Um, and the Black Bolt deck I had is a little bit slower because um, you're really trying to like accumulate energy and then on turn, eight, turn six you have eight energy to like figure out what to do to win the game. Whereas this one is much more like I'm getting down early, I'm getting down early, you can't Professor X me. Um, so that's a consideration going forward. I don't know if this one's better or worse than the Black Bolt one. The Black Bolt one feels cleaner when you really do the thing, but this has vision and vision is better than Black Bolt. Vision's just an insanely good card. Um, Spider-Man without Miles, I don't know how good it is. It's still, it's still a three, five yeah. that procs, that procs hope. Um, and you know, the, it's ostensibly disruption. I think that's more like copium disruption. But sometimes you can you can actually do something like the only real thing that this deck well I get the structure I I've added with Shadow King you can beat Phoenix Force but like I was thinking of the other decks the only way the other decks could like ever beat Phoenix Force is you with priority move multiple man before they eat it like that's yeah. your literal you prior move your, the multiple man or you prior yeah. move the Nimrod <laughs> like, yeah exactly those are, those are your plays 
Exactly. And then, but Shuri and Nimrod players are also smart enough to realize that if you're staying versus Shuri and Nimrod, you have a plan. So they'll just go spider it. Like, they'll see, I don't actually plan. know if they're that smart because I never stay against Shuri and Nimrod. Well, yeah. <laughs> they did. No, I did a copium stay versus someone um, because I had Spider Man. Like, there's no way they see this right. coming. And I think they were probably playing around Eliath, which was, sure. and I lost. I just got, yeah. I should have retreated, but I was like, maybe I could, no, I should have just gone. Um, so I don't know if this is necessarily better than Black Bolt Stature or worse than Black Bolt Stature, but again, it's just like the core principles of if you're if Hope Range Rage is good, it is good because it is playing Hope, Miss Marvel, Doom, Magento, Tech Cards, Jeff, Gladiator. Glad to um, see the Magento Mind Virus has affected you as well. Yeah, I, mean, I can't help it. <laughs> um, and that like so that that's like the core of it. Um, I've thought about. Because I'm a little bit of a of a claw lever, um, claw is a five drop in this only because I'm worried about like nonstop Professor X coming out, and like you can uh, for, before they I, I'm not going to actually do it because I don't think there's like any good follow up to it. Right. But um, if there is just like nothing but turn for Professor X and like you're you're tilting, I'm just saying like you can experiment around the edges with some of like the pieces, but the main core is like you know essentially. Uh, I guess it's probably like Spider Man and Vision. So it's basically like a ten card core. It's pretty close to a ten card core. I mean, um, I think I think the core. Well, because like I don't think Shadow King is necessarily core. Shadow King's like no, it's true. Response, he's just, he's right? just good. Like he's just good right now. Right. Like it's like Shadow King's not necessarily core. I I honestly would argue that I'm not sure any of the fives are necessarily core, just because of how awkward they are with Hope. Like I get where yeah. you're going with it, but it's also like. Hope really wants you to just do, like, be a six gamer. Hope wants you to be, like, you know, Hope, Dudes, Doom, Magento, or something along those lines most of the time. Like, that's just really Yeah, cool. although I do think Vision is so good. He is. Um, that, I mean, if it's not Vision, and then the Black Bolt Satcher thing is doing a very specific thing mm -hmm. of giving you a way to maximize your energy on turn six, um, instead of floating like an extra one that you can't do anything with, yeah. I mean, six drops are better, and there's not many other good five drops. And the claw thing is only if there's just like nothing but Professor X on four. Um, other than that, I mean, one, there's not that many good fives, and you know, so the core is really just power as much as you can, as many tech cards as you can fit in while still having respectable power output, Miss Marvel and Doom and Magento. Yep, um, it's it's that that's really pretty it. much it, right? Like it's just yeah, good cards. Hope Summers, yeah. Doom, Magento, Miss Marvel. That's that's yeah. the core, right? Yeah. And then like, so if if you don't want to do like Spider Man, like I don't know, just re just a bunch of cards that are like decently on rate. I don't, you know, there's no other way to to really put it. Um, you could probably you could maybe fit in a different kind of tech card. Like I know, Yo Woody was playing, um. He was playing Rogue over Gladiator. I wouldn't take out Gladiator. Sure. But but the idea was because on the hot location day, everyone was playing for a time Black Knight. And then the idea was to Rogue and Shadow King the Ebony Blade. Okay, um, I'm no this... longer on board. <laughs> I'm <laughs> off board. I'm just saying why Woody did it. I already told Woody to suck it. So, like, I'm not saying. Right, I'm off board. I'm off board. But, like, I am on board. I'm just saying, like, like switching the you can customize it, but the main core has to include Miss Marvel. Right, it it's a Sarah deck. It's literally, yeah. it's a Sarah deck, except instead of Sarah, you play Hope, and that lets you play Doom Magento. That's what the deck is. Yeah, that's, ba that's basically it. Like, and then if you didn't want a Shadow King, it could even be Maximus, sure. right? And then, like, sometimes you tempo it, and then Thanos snaps you in your retreat. But then other times, like, you know, you, you get to actually save it because you have enough of an early game. But yeah, it's a Sarah deck without Sarah, more energy treat, bigger dudes. All right, y'all, that's going to be it from myself and Big Baby, the number one ranked player in Marvel Snap. I hope you enjoyed his insights. I hope it taught you how to play Hope Summers correctly, or at the very least, how to stop playing Hope Summers wrong. Yeah. That's the real goal here. I'm probably going to put some gameplay on the back end of this, but if I don't, you legally cannot yell at me about it. I'm sorry. That's just how it works. Big Baby, do you have any final words for the viewers as the, the most guest of all time on this channel? Uh, I'm technically not rank one anymore, which is what? When did you lose? Kid, my, I lost it to Tanjo today because oh, you lost he was it like playing an hour low, ago. <laughs> no, all day. T 
Tanjo smelled blood in the water because everyone was playing Thanos, mm -hmm. and he was like, somehow Loki returned. And then I looked, and then I looked up at the leaderboard, and it's just like, oh, Tanjo is just turbo farming all the Thanos decks playing while he was playing Loki. Um, but uh, yeah, I think Hope's, Hope's a pretty cool card. I would think she would be cooler if it kind of wasn't just yet another card that is best in Thanos. Um, Do you think even though this deck has been so successful for you, even though other decks have been so successful with Hope as well, do you still think it's, like, best in Thanos? Because as far as I can tell, like, you know, rank one, rank one, play in, both play in Hope Summers, right? Tanjo's got Hope in Loki, you've got Hope in this. Like, th are we sure it's the best in Thanos card? Yeah. I just... I just feel like Thanos has so many... I mean, the only reason why every one of the best cards in the game over the last X months isn't in Thanos right now is because there's a 12-card limit. Um, <laughs> basically, just... It's basically just culling the best cards and then, like, okay, you're slightly better than the last best card. Like, you're gone. But, like, Thanos used to have Gladiator. And then, you know... It never had Miss Marvel, though. Kamala never Khan, had Ms. Marvel. Kamala Khan never standing had, up for the little that's guy. The, that's the only one. So it's just like, I don't know. I just feel Thanos' his point potential is so high and its tools. And it feels a little feels bad, man. Um, I don't think it's like, it's not as unfun as it, it wasn't. It's not as bad as it was when Blob was like arbitrarily large dude that yeah. guarantees you win a lane. Um, I do wonder with Mockingbird if things are going to take a little bit of a turn. Because while she's effective, while she is countered by Mobius, by the time you get Mobius out on turn three, they could have already played Mockingbird. They could play two stones, they play Mockingbird on three, and you're like, oh, I wasted a turn on Mobius. Um, so I'm just a little uneasy about it. So I, I do think Thanos, is, Thanos just has more, it makes better use of the energy than any other deck, because it just, it has, it doesn't have like a, uh, infinite amount of big dudes, but it just carries more big dudes than any other deck. Um, so, I think I think it's better. Obviously, the Loki matchup with Hope into Thanos is really strong, um, especially if they get greedy and they cut Mobius and they're like, oh, I don't want to lose Scar, so yeah. I'm just going to play Mockingbird and Scar, and then you're really kind of setting yourself up to get buried by Loki. Yeah, the Profex yeah. builds also get a little bit buried by Loki. Like, yeah. those are not matchups that you... Like, if you're a Loki player, you'd rather play against that than a Scar build. Every, basically every single time. Yeah, I think that's right. And then, so it's like, is Loki ever the good guy? Like, only maybe in this one instance. And then, I've been impressed with the whole mid-range. Like, yeah. I'm not going to say it's better than Thanos, but it's felt good into a wide variety of things. Um, I think if I were in a tournament versus a good player on Thanos, I think my deck would be a dog. I think it would be a pretty, I think it would be the underdog. Um, and which is not to say that you can't win, but like you're starting out at a disadvantage just on the merits of the decks. Um, so it's still that kind of thing I said before, where it's like you're playing a mid range deck that does not have the better of the matchup with the dominant deck in the game, which is kind of an awkward spot. At least as I think about it, um, it's it's like yes, you can beat Thanos with this. Now, for someone who like me who wants to play different decks and doesn't want to just play Thanos all day, that's fine. That's good. I have another deck to play. But if you're someone who's just like I want to climb, would I say like play this over Thanos or you know hope mid range over Thanos? I'd say no. I wouldn't. I would say no. And um, on that slightly depressing bombshell, <laughs> <laughs> it's time to end. Thank you so much. Big baby, uh, if you have any any last words, any last words you want to say on on this channel, you want to you want to shout anything out? Shout out I mean, to your kids? No, no, no. Fuck your kids. All right, all fuck right. Fuck the kids. Cool. Fuck <laughs> the kids. Fuck you. Fuck the kids. Fuck yo, Woody. All right. <laughs>